Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, border theorem that you've heard a lot already about a few times uh, in this uh, workshop. So let me start with the basic kind of question that border is trying to answer. And here's uh, an explicit question, if you wish, about auctions, but it's really all just a plain question about probabilities. So we're selling one item and two players we have. Each one can have either a low value or a high value. So we don't care what's a low value or a high value, we're sort of abstracting away. And the question is, can you design any auction where you win, if you have a low value, you win with probability 30%. If you have a high value, you win with probability 70%. And I'm only talking about can you get the probabilities to work out. Don't, don't worry about any games or strategies or anything like that. So I have my own, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so can you do that? So what do we need to do, basically? We need to fill in probabilities for any combination of values of the players. We need to fill what is the probability the first guy wins, what is the probability the second guy wins. Okay, the column player wins with this probability, the, the row player with that probability. The sum of these two has to be one. And by the way, I'm assuming uniform equal probability L and H. And what I need is that the, the total probability that the row player wins, 0.3, has to be the averages of these two numbers. And the total probability, let's say, that this guy wins when he has high value is the average of these numbers. So can you fill the question marks so you get the, these averages? And the answer is yes, you can. So here's one solution. Good. So can you always do that? For example, can now suppose that I want 0.2 with low and 0.8 with high. Can you do that? And the answer turns out to be no. So if you try to fill in the question marks to get the, you know, that the average of this guy and this guy is this guy and so on, you will not be able to do that if your constraints of probabilities are between 0 and 1. So uh, how do you know that you cannot? Well, basically, Border gives a completely general uh, solution to these types of questions. So the input, if you wish, to Border's theorem is the question, suppose I'm giving you the probabilities, so each player can have one of m different values. Each of n players can have one of m different values. And I'm telling you the probability that he wins for each one of these values. So you get m probabilities for each player, which is the probability that he wins for each one of his types, if you wish. <coughs> and so let's call this xij, the probability that I win that this type is j. And the question is, does there exist an auction with this winning prob which gives you these winning probabilities. And for now, it's just a question about probability, nothing more than that. So I'm just asking for, does there exist like a tensor? So it's going to be a matrix, you know, an, an, an n-dimensional matrix with n numbers <coughs> on each side, where the averages work out according to the xij. And the question, can you have that? So when you're given this sequence of n times n numbers, and the question is yes or no. Can you figure that out or not? And Border answers completely. And this is, the, this is the question. So here's a defi definitely a necessary condition for you being able to do that. If you look at, you fix a subset of, I, of values for the first player, a subset of values for the second player, and so on. And now you sum these probabilities. So, so you get at this point at least the prob you get at most the pro you get the probability that the first player wins when he's in this set, and the, or the second player wins when he's in that set, and so on. We haven't touched any of the probabilities that someone wins where they're in the complement. So none of the players in these sets. So of course, if you sum all these numbers up, you can get you must have to get at most one, because otherwise you have promised too much probability. Right? Because the probability that's left after without touching the, these values, the values that we're not talking about, have to somehow be split among these n players. So obviously these are necessary conditions. And Border says that these are uh, sufficient conditions. So just about notation, when I say the probability of a, you know, a Cartesian product, it's just if I have a uniform distribution, which I'm still thinking about, although it doesn't really matter in general, and it's just the the, you know, the, pro the product of the ratios of the relative sizes of the sets that I chose. So that's very easy. Yes. Uh, of course, by the way, uh, Border B, an economist, he wrote that with integrals, but uh, that's the basic idea. So let's say it uh, in a graphical way. Uh, so I want to know, so suppose I have these numbers, these five numbers here and these six numbers here. These are supposed to be the interim probability, the probabilities of the second player winning. These are supposed to be the player probabilities of the first player winning. So of course we must have that the probability that this, this guy wins here, plus the probability that this guy wins, plus the probability 
that none of them is in one of the red states, all that has to be at most one. And if you take, that's obvious, and if you take all of these things, that's sufficient. It turns out a very nice and beautiful theorem. Uh, and by the way, uh, so when I said two years, so apparently border, uh, so there is some history, I'm not talking about it, but border proved the theorem twice. Uh, and after he proved it in 91, 16 years later, he said, oh, by the way, you can just use it with, dual, with linear programming duality. So the first proof was sort of complicated, and the second was very easy. So Do you need all subsets, or could you specialize? Uh, OK. So, OK, so now I'm a bit fudgy here about how general I want to be. If you're, so one thing that's obvious, if we're, we're thinking about a uniform distribution, let's say, over the rows and columns, then of course the tight sets are the ones with, uh, a, with the largest x's. So you might as well, if you order the x's from the highest to the lowest, you might take a prefix to the left, right? <coughs> okay, so what's the difference? So, so far I uh, just talked about probability that I want to go one step towards the auction. So what's missing between this and an auction? Well, first of all, uh, so far our types were just the indices, but really in an auction setting, the types come with a real type, with a real value for getting the item. So each player uh, also has values for each one of his possible states, and the value is very important because that's the main point of how much is he willing to pay for the item. And also at auction, we have to tell how, mean, how much these guys are going to pay when they win. It's not just what's the probability of winning. And uh, really, for everything that we do, uh, we're going to be Bayesian, so we're only are worried about the expected payment. So we're going to have these numbers, Pij, what is the expected payment of player I when he has type J? So we also will have these things. And then there are also constraints, which actually say this is really an auction. Players don't want to deviate. And the constraints come, come in, basic constraints are we have individual rationality that I want, to, I want to participate, meaning I'm not going to pay more than what I gain. And incentive compatibility, I'm not going to deviate from what the equilibrium says I should be doing. And the only thing that, that these are completely standard, very simple. And the important thing that I want to sh say here is that these constraints are linear in the variables xij and pij. So they're linear in them, just normal linear constraints, both these guys and these guys. These are now constants, and there are very few of them. Okay, so that's the only thing that's important. Okay, so why, why have we been so interested in uh, border theorem recently? Well, I mean, first of all, one thing is border theorem, but as itself is like a Cohen p characterization of being in the set because it tells you constraints, but it turns out you can actually make this into an algorithm. So you can actually tell, given these numbers, does it work or doesn't it work? And once you have this, then you immediately get for free something amazing. You can do computational mechanism design uh, almost for free. So suppose I wanted to answer the following question. Uh, suppose I wanted to find one item auction that optimizes something that involves revenue and welfare and payments of certain players and utilities of other payments and probability of winning of yet other players and I have some kind of linear combination of these different goals which are basically all the types of things we care about in auction design. How would I do that? How would I optimize, find the optimal auction for that? So, you know, Meyerson can tell me exactly how to only optimize revenue, maybe a little bit more. But suppose I have a general kind of thing. How do I optimize? And the answer is, ah, we can do linear programming. How do we do a linear program? Well, we have a, basically an LP characterization now of our, uh, of our set of auctions. So it turns out that the set of possible auctions are exactly the ones that satisfy the conditions that the probabilities work out according to border theorem, plus all the incentive constraints that I had in the previous slide. So I just optimize over this set of things. Okay. And to optimize over this set, these are going to be my variables. A few of them, there are going to be two types of constraints. The, if you wish, strategic ones from the previous slide, which are the nice thing about them, there are very few of them. There are going to be like the border constraints which there are many of them, but at least we know what they are, so we can handle them algorithmically using this. And then we can optimize whatever we want, which is beautiful and is a very general and strong theorem. Okay? Okay. So the, fact that, the fact that it was an LP was, you don't need border for that. No. Just border, um, uh, compactify, gives you less... Exactly. So the only thing, the only, okay, so... 
the the fact that it's border but notice how i've set it up i'm talking about a, it about immediately already only talking what's called the reduced form so i have a small number of variables if you want to do it in the original things you get an exponential thing so i'm already talking about the in the reduced form and we look about the reduced form the problem is can you characterize this poly, you know polytope you know many things there are these huge polytopes which we can't touch and we can't optimize over but once you have border theorem and this it, in this practical implementation of it, you, can, you have the exact polytope and you can optimize nicely. Okay, so that's what you need to do. Okay, so this is all very nice. And now the question is, okay, can we generalize it? So, you know, an auction of one item is definitely the first problem you'd consider in mechanism design, but not the last one. So, you know, we have project, pro public project, then you have multi-item auctions, and you have lots and lots of different type of mechanism design problems. And can you generalize border theorem? To be useful, whenever you generalize border theorem, you can again get this completely general mechanism design kind of a, a polynomial design, which would be great. And uh, there's been, of course, lots of work on this in our community in the last few years. And I think there are basically two types of extensions known. One of them, just slight generalizations to uh, where you actually get a nice border, complete border theorem. For example, I think Yang talked about the example where you have auctions of multiple unrelated items, where you get an exact generalization of border theorem, and he presented that in his talk. And there are also other very, very general for almost any mechanism design problem that you can think of, but these are only approximate computational. So approximate computational is that may be annoying for two reasons. Uh, for the you know, computational one, it's approximate. That's uh, so sad. We want it not to be approximate. From a mathematical point of view, the fact that it's computational, you don't get like a nice set of equalities like in border. That's sort of annoying, I would say, for economists as well. So the question is, uh, OK, we, we'd like to do better. How much can you, can you, can you actually do exactly deterministically by giving a nice set of equalities like you know you would expect um, a generalization of a mathematical theorem to be okay so that's basically our question uh, can we get border in, border characterizations for more general things and let me just say <clears throat> so what is a border like theorem so one thing that immediately uh, should be immediately uh, clear is that the set of possible vectors of probabilities, the set of feasible evaluation, the set of these feasible interim allocations, that's clearly a polytope. You can see it's just a projection of a higher dimensional one. It's obviously a polytope, so there obviously are going to be a bunch of inequalities that define it. Of course, what we want is very explicit ones, and explicit probably will also, I mean, so explicit is not always exactly the same thing for a computer scientist and mathematician. Uh, we're going to take the computer science point of view. C explicit means that you can recognize them. You know when something is an inequality, you can check whether the inequality holds. Definitely border has that thing. And if, you, if that's not the case, then we have invoke, I don't know, the Christos paradigm, which says that computational nastiness implies mathematical nastiness. Okay, so it's almost, so you know, if this is going to be bad, from a, if we don't have an explicit computational thing, then probably the explicit mathematical thing will be difficult, although you can always, uh, you know, attack the Christos paradigm. And the basic question is no. Basically, what has been done is what is possible. It's been extended as much as possible, and beyond that, it's going to be terrible, and it's going to be uh, something, to, something like sharp e hard to do better border. Okay, so it's a sharp yard to get a theorem, so I will say exactly what that means. But basically, the mathematical, the statement that we have, that unless, you know, bad things happen in complexity, and definitely sharp p contained in p to the np, that's considered a bad thing. The hierarchy collapses, in the bank, among other uh, things. Uh, I don't know if that's bad. But there you're not going to be able to do it for almost anything that you want to do that they don't know how to do now. <clears throat> okay, and how does the proof go? Okay, so, so notice that I'm using a computational intractability kind of assumption, complexity in the usual computational sense, and my, my, the outcome of what I'm saying is that, oh, you're not going to get a mathematical theorem that economists may like, okay? So, so that's sort of the, you know, a nice uh, kind of application. And basically, the, the logic will be uh, the following logic. We're going to show first that if you have a border-like characterization, then in some precise sense, 
the problem of recognizing feasible interim allocations so you're given this vector of, these vectors of x's and saying whether yes or no, is it feasible or not. So if you have a border colonization, that's not going to be a very difficult problem computationally. And the second thing is we are going to show that for an interesting mechanism design problems, this exact same question is going to be comput difficult computationally. And that would give you the, uh, the, uh, <coughs> the proof. OK. So the first part is actually, yes. I'm trying to understand a statement you made a, a second ago, which is, or that you were saying, you know, complexity means you're not going to get a theorem that economists would like, um, because there's a generalization of border to matroids. Yeah. That gives you a theorem that I think economists like. <coughs> and so, okay. and, but I think matroids don't satisfy your property where you get theorems that you like. Okay, so, so let me say, so, so basically what you're saying is, Right, okay. So, so I think you're talking about, if you wish, the, the cracks in the papa Dimitro paradigm, which says there are situations where something is difficult computationally, and yet a mathematician you would say this is not difficult, it's very nice. And the classic example would be a multidimensional integral, where a multidimensional integral, some mathematicians would say this is completely fine, you know, it's closed form, and computer scientists would say this is terrible, it's sharply hard. And this is exactly, so you're right, so you, we, you know, we want people can uh, discuss the, the crack and its importance and what happens, and I think all your examples will fall exactly under that crack. Um, although one thing I would like to say is that uh, you're going to need more than one large integral of that form. You're going to need like a large family, more than polynomial and in integrals. Otherwise, you'd be in the complexity class, char p with, or p to the np with poly advice. And that's again considered to be bad. Okay? So you really would need to have super polynomially many bad integrals for, to, to think, but, uh, okay, but it could be. Yeah, so, so I don't want to, so that's a really fascinating discussion, how much computational complexity can inform you about mathematical nastiness, and when is it not the case. Uh, okay. Sorry for, uh, I mean, everything is great here. Well, how do integrals get into this picture? So the integrals, so integrals, <laughs> as you know, I immediately translate anyway integrals to sigmas. And you have an n-dimensional di integral, that's an n-dimensional sigma, you so you're, sums. N sums, n, n sums, but one inside the other, right? One, one inside the other, okay. right? Okay, so, and in, so basically you're summing over exponentially many things. And that's going to be bad. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. So, okay, so let's say, so why is it true that if we have a border-like characterization, things are going to be a little bit easy? Because the border-like characterization, basically, what it means is that you have, you can tell whether some kind of inequality is the, is the facet of this polytope. And of course, you can figure out whether you're inside or outside. So, uh, so it basically means in a computational sense, it means that you can recognize when something is outside. You have a proof when something is outside of the polytope. So at least that gives you like a co-NP kind of characterization of being outside. So the whole ellipsoid thing would be a P to the co-NP kind of thing. So that would give you a P to the, uh, uh, so, okay, so the characterization would be in the class code co-NP. That would be uh, completely obvious, okay? Because that's exactly what the border says. So it's not going to be too difficult. And, uh, <clears throat> and what do I mean by saying that uh, for certain problems, this is going to be hard to actually, uh, <clears throat> to actually recognize a feasible interim allocation rule. So we're going to actually show, we're going to actually describe a very simple public project setting for which to realize whether you can get these probabilities or not is going to be sharply hard. So this is a Boolean decision problem, and the sharply hardness would be under Turing reductions, which is good enough for everything that we do. <coughs> okay, so here is a problem for which I want to show this sharply hardness, and this is really the simplest kind of mechanism design thing that you can have in almost anything else that works. We have a few other examples. So can you go back to one for, for a moment? What you're saying is that, that Modular border, modular characterization mm -hmm. of the interim, everything else is easy. Everything else is easy, yes. That already I had in a previous slide. Right? So, here. 
that I had even before that. Modulo border, uh, oops, sorry, I'm going the opposite way here. Um, so when I say, suppose I want to, to optimize this kind of various thing, the whole point was that modulo border, everything is, 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 everything is just NP. Okay. Because in the size of the problem, because again, you could... Uh, in the size of the reduced problem, I'm already in the reduced world. Smaller is exponentially smaller relative to, to the original problem. Right. That's, that's a claim. And so I, in my setup, I didn't have an original problem. I only had the reduced problem. Okay, so I, I mean. <laughs> in reduced forms, you can you can solve the mechanism design problem. That's a claim. The only obstacle to finding the best reduced form is figuring out if it's feasible. Is the polynomial of time separation oracle for this uh, family of inequalities, I guess, and that suffices? Yes, but it doesn't say still that finding the optimal option or something, I it's don't fun. know. So the point, that, that's the point of the, all the previous work, that's exactly the point. That, yes, it does say, yes. That's exactly the point that it does say, yes. It does say, and not only does it say it, it says that if you look already, you know, so first you need to think a little to go to the reduced thing, but once you think already in the reduced thing, there's not, nothing to prove except saying, oh, do it be. Okay, so here's the problem I'm going to look at. And I'm trying to make it as uh, Booleanish as possible for a mechanism design problem. Uh, so we need to decide whether to build a bridge or not. So the output is going to be yes or no. And there are going to be n players, and each one is going to have a value whether uh, he wants the bridge to, to be built or not. And we're going to talk about a very simple, discrete kind of valuation uh, set. With probability one half, I don't care if the bridge is built. And with probability one half, I'm going to gain utility WI, where WI depends on I, and it's publicly known for everyone. Okay? And, uh, and the question is, doing basic revenue maximization <coughs> on, uh, and the question is, doing basic, basic revenue maximization on this kind of thing. Okay? And I'm going to show that that cannot be done. That's a Sharpie hard problem. Okay, so now let's go again. So why is the fact that I can't do a revenue maximization thing and this kind of thing, how does that go back to border? Because as we already saw, if you do have border, you can, do, you can optimize anything that relates to revenue and many other things, and you would be able to do this. Okay, so the fact that I show that you cannot figure out the possible maximum possible revenue immediately implies that you should, are not able to do computationally the, just the border itself, because that's the only bottleneck that you have. Okay, so one thing is, uh, this should already look a little bit suspicious to all economists here, because this is definitely within the Meyerson framework, it's single dimensional. So you can find the optimal auction, in fact I'll tell you what it is in a second. Uh, so how can I say that it's going to be difficult to find the revenue? Well, because it's going to be difficult to find the revenue even though you know what the auction is. Okay, so the problem is given WI, what is the optimal auction? I'm going to tell you it's very easy, and Meyerson in fact tells you it's very easy. The question is, given the W is what is the revenue of that optimal auction, that is the difficult thing. So why do we care about what the revenue is? Well, you know, first of all, it's curious to know that you can't figure out the revenue even though you know what the auction is, but we care in our situation because if you had border, you could also figure out the revenue. <coughs> okay. So, and, I mean, Sharpie hardness, uh, typically sampling will give you very good estimates. A good approximation, as we said, just sample and get very good Absolutely, and in fact, we know, as, as we mentioned before, we have very general positive results if you allow yourself approximation and randomization, right? And definitely the general, the very general ones include this problem as, more, as well as many more, much more difficult ones. So we know how to do approximate randomized mechanism design here completely. Yeah, and I guess I, I feel that there's a difference between inexactness that comes from sampling and inexactness that comes from, say, anywhere else. I, I, I can believe that, uh, but that to the... He's saying what's the limit of border theorem, and he's right. making a very good argument that there is a limit here. That doesn't mean that this is hard to do, because as we know, we know what the optimal mechanism is, so it's not hard to do. But you still can't have a border, border theorem here, because if you did, then you could get this exactly. And, and the approximate border theorems, the only bottleneck is also sampling. So sampling... Like, 
Okay, so what is the optimal mechanism for this? So you can do it in two ways. One of them is just do arrow, uh, just do Myerson, sorry. Uh, and <laughs> you, for most other questions, it's just do arrow. But uh, <laughs> okay, so you, you just do Myerson. And basically the question, the, 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 optimal, the optimal auction is the, weight, the, threshold, uh, the weighted threshold function. So you sum the weights of the guys who want the bridge, so that happen to have WI, and you compute, and you, so that, that gets the value WI, and you compute the sum of these values, the sum of these weights to the weights of the guys who are indifferent about the bridge. So they really don't care if you build the bridge, but because they're indifferent, we're going to, they're going to vote against. And if the threshold, if you're above the threshold, you build the bridge, and otherwise you don't build the bridge. And you can actually see that the amount of revenue you get from that is basically, the amount of revenue you get from the ice player from the ice bidder is basically his gain, his gain from moving from the zero outcome to the one outcome, which is a difference of probabilities times, times his WI. Okay. And so the, all of this is, is, is this. so the fact that given a function, this is the op, this is the revenue you get can get get from it. This is completely uh, basic. You can just go and do it yourself immediately. There is nothing to it. The fact that this is the optimal thing, you can do Myerson. And now the second way you could do it, if you're from the other workshop that's going on here, uh, this is really basically the weighted, maximizing the weighted sum of influences of a sort of Boolean function. And if we want to maximize the sum of influences, we know that majority does it. And if you do it in a Fourier transform kind of way, these elements are really the, the first, the, the Fourier coefficients of the singleton items. And the, so there are very easy and well-known proofs that the, the majority maximizes the sum of influences. The same proof immediately gives you that weighted majority, which is the threshold function, which maximizes the sum of weighted influences, the weighted sum of influences. And in fact, that gives you an alternative for Pearson's proof that this is the optimal auction, at least in this case. So, okay, but that was a shout out for the other uh, thing. Okay, so now the only question that we really need to know, how difficult it is to compute this sum? Okay, very simple. So because it has really a probability there. So the point is each one of these probability things is really a, an exponential kind of average, average of a, among exponentially many kind of things. So of course you can sample it, but can you compute it exactly? So it turns out that it's hard as you would expect. So anyone that sees that kind of thing, you can figure out it's difficult. So this is our computational problem. You get your Ws, you want to estimate, you want to calculate, not estimate, you want to calculate the probability, the weighted sum of the uh, differences of influences here. And how difficult is that problem? So if you look at it a bit, well, let's suppose one of the Ws is really small. One of the Ws is really small. If there's no one, we can always add it for a reduction. So if one of the Ws is really small, he's only have going to have influence if the other guys are exactly tied. And also from the answer, we can read out exactly the probability that the other guys are tied. So it means that if I could do this, I could figure out whether there's a pos what is the probability that the other guys are tied. The probability that the other guys are tied, well, that's sort of like uh, a, uh, this is exactly a sharp partition problem, if you wish. Because being tied, you have a bunch of things, some positive, some negative. Can you split it into two sets that they have the same thing? And sharp partition is really a very close cousin of sharp knapsack, which is already one of the, you know, at this point, it's sharply hard. Okay? It's a Turing reduction? It's a Turing reduction, yeah. All my reductions are Turing reduction. So we didn't care so much since anyway the LP was a Turing kind of thing, so we weren't a... Uh, so, okay, so, so that's a d delicate thing. So we're talk giving like here... Uh, yeah, so I'm not sure, so, okay. I, tr I, I was wondering also about that, and I started figuring it out, but I never finished. So I think something is known and something else is not known, and I couldn't figure out if, I, if this is also complete under like, the normal kind of Sharpie reductions. Same, right? Yeah. Sharpie completeness under Turing and Yeah. Okay, so, so I don't know. So the statement that it's certainly Turing complete, I probably, it's also normal to complete, but uh, I don't know. <clears throat> okay, so that basically finishes the proof. I mean, if you believe the slide, which is uh, really an, exer you know, an exercise. 
So basically what has been shown for a public project, for the public Boolean, the pu for the Boolean public project mechanism design, which has chosen to be on one hand as close as possible to what we do in Boolean functions, and on the other hand, it's really one of the simplest kind of uh, mechanism design problems that you have, and if you want to do almost anything else, it's embedded somewhere there. We showed that computing the optimal revenue is going to be hard computationally, and that implies that there's not going to be bordered theorem for this very simple instance of an auction problem. The matrix, if, if you. Okay, so, okay, so you're saying a theorem from your point of view of, of when it does it look nice mathematically to your eyes, it's matroids, which is a farther along than what computation is the situation. And it would be really nice if you could quantify that mathematically that, you know, if I allow myself these types of integrals, then I could go only this and not there. Uh, I don't know how to do that because if you allow yourself, like, sampling, you can go all the way. That I'm missing here? Uh, so you write the same thing, but then on the so if if you take his equation he initially had, but you put the expected rank of the matroid when people show up with the probabilities that you have in the sets, um, then you get a border theorem for matroids. Okay, and so you you get the mathematical equation on one side, you get an expectation of the expected rank according to the matroid. Okay, and this is a very succinct, nice description. Uh, of this thing, and even uh, but part I, of the problem with matroids is that, that there is exponential amount of input here, because you have to the rank function is so like calculating expected. the expected rank function is, you know, is approximate. You can approximate it, but it. Like here, the order theorem usually have exponential number of inequalities, but doesn't have exponential amount of input. You can compactly think of what they are, whereas rank function is sort of intellectually new head compact but I can't give it to you as an input. I mean, it's a query question. Yeah, the input is the, the matroid description in the first place. Which is exponential itself. There is no compact description of matroids. I mean, for many there are. Okay. Like I give you the graphical matroid, it's the graphical matroid. That's yeah. the compact input, okay, so. I mean, you can have succinct representation of certain matroids, that's true, but then it may be, so I mean, of course at the end, we all know it's going to be computationally sharply hard to actually compute these expected ranks of even if you give a succinct one and definitely if you give a non-succinct one, right? So, so I, agree. I mean, I think it would be really nice. So this is like a more general kind of thing of the whole Papa Dimitro paradigm that if you showed something is hard computationally, it means that it's bad mathematically. This is like a big crack everywhere and it would be nice to be able to go even a little step more further than, you know, what's really P and or, or, you know, easy computation or not to show not only is it difficult computationally, but even if we allow mathematicians to do these types of integrals or these types of sampling, you can't do this. That would be really nice. So just to be clear, though, so a step back from all matroids is the uniform matroid. So two units, one item. What yeah. is your... So I don't think we have a result for that either side. Right, so, so, so we have like a bunch of examples. It doesn't cover co where it's hard. So we know for things like matching, for, for single-minded bidders. So we have a bunch of results where it's hard. So we sort of thought it covered almost anything that you could think of, but very like possibly there are more things that did not fall under our impossibility and are not yet known. Uh, there's not much there, but definitely there could be interesting things there. I, I, I don't uh, have an exhaustive... Uh, map of the, of the area in my head. <coughs> 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 <coughs>